Hey guys, this is Mark Wright from Argos Dog Training. And today we are going to um, go into our questions here, our Ask Argos hashtag ask Argos questions here in order to be able to answer some of these questions that we have got piled up over the last few weeks. All right. Um, so the first question that we have is from Wagging Tails Dog Training. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. Um, I love when dog trainers watch the channel. If there's anything, you know, yeah. So thank you guys for watching Wagging Tails. So the question is, I'll just read the comment that she has, or he has here. Looks like it's a she in the picture has here. Wagon Tails. Um, love this channel. Just wondering, what is your take on rescues slash pit bulls? I know those are two different things, but I thought I'd ask it in the same question. All right, my take on, let's start with uh, the easy one. My take on pit bulls. I love pit bulls. They're the most, they're versatile dogs. Um, pit bulls. There are many different breeds that are really make up the pit bull. You know, um, we think of pit bulls as there's a bunch of different breeds that will fall into that category. Pit bull is not a breed, it's a category of breeds. Uh, and they're, so you have dogs of different sizes um, there as well and different temperaments, you know, um, different energy levels. Um, so yeah, for pit bulls, they get a thumbs up, two thumbs up from me. You could do anything with the dog. You could train them to do anything. They're great for tricks. They're great for Frisbee. Um, they're great for protection work. Uh, they're great for agility. Um, they're smart. They're, well, you know, they're smart. They're forgiving. They're all the things you'd want in a dog. They can be mishandled. They can have behavioral problems, but none of that is breed specific. Um, I love the breed. I would get a pit bull, except for when I was a small child, that was not one of my top breeds to get. And because I live in a city and I don't live on a farm where I could get as many dogs as I wanted to, um, I might not be able to ha have one personally, but we'll see. Maybe in 10 years, I'll be in a different situation where I could have more dogs and then I would definitely get a pit bull. Uh, my top five list of breeds to have pit bull is up there. Um, wonderful dogs. Uh, next question, what do I think of rescues? Um, this is a trickier question. Uh, most rescues are great. I love rescues, I love the idea of rescues. But just like anything else, there are some people that are in the rescue organizations that can kind of taint it a little bit. You have to be careful when you get involved with a rescue organization to make sure that they're doing things the right way. A lot of times people will also put ideolo ideological um, things into their rescue instead of just being there just for the dog. Some people use rescues as a way to make money as well, um, which there's nothing wrong with making a little bit of profit even from a rescue, but you don't want it to be the main driving force at least in my opinion, as to why you're rescuing dogs, right? So that's what I say about that. There's a bunch of good rescues out there. There's a bunch of great rescues out there. And maybe one day I'll make a video where I go over a bunch that I really like in the Boston area and around the U.S. because I am, you know, involved and I do see things. So maybe in, in the future I'll make something like that. But uh, yeah, I like rescues. Okay, guys, uh, this is our second question. Our second question comes from uh, Tiffany Berry, um, and the question goes, Hi, I've been trying to implement these exercises. Let me pause here real quick. The video is puppy handling exercises video um, featuring Brixton, the Airedale Terrier. That's the video that she's referring to in this comments. One thing that dogs need to understand, young puppies need to understand, is that we got to handle them. This is puppy play biting. Hi, I have been trying to implement these exercises with our new puppy and it's not going well. She tries to do the whole puppy biting play during, so I gently hold her muzzle to discourage and it almost seems like it eggs her on to bite even more like it's a game. Then after the correction, it starts to upset her and she begins to growl and get very riled up. What am I doing wrong? All right, so I think what the situation is here is that the dog owner um, is trying to do the puppy handling exercises that I show in that video for puppies that are play biting. Um, 
and it's not going exactly the way that it should go for her. Now, I believe in that same video, I said that some people will be good at this puppy handling and some people will not. Um, and if you're not good at it, you should do something else. I am happy to see that her awareness, that um, Tiffany's awareness is that she's noticing what's happening with her dog. If it's egging on your dog, if your dog is getting more riled up through it, then I suggest that you use separation. Um, in other words, seeing that the dog is excited, knowing that the puppy play biting is likely to happen, and then just basically separating from the puppy. Um, puppy play biting, as I said, probably in that video will last until the dog is around six months old when the puppy teeth fall out. Um, at this stage, a lot of times I could just brush off the puppy and I have to deal with it. You know, I don't get on the floor necessarily as much. And of course, I give the puppy things to soothe its gums and teeth. Um, some people will be good at this puppy hold, some people will not. It's hard for me to say exactly what you're doing wrong. Um, I've seen clients who I show them the hold and they alter it. Um, for example, they would have the puppy be in front of them and they try to reach forward and hold the puppy rather than turning the puppy into a position that they should be and that doesn't work out for them. Um, I'm not sure what's going wrong. The only thing I would say is that you have to have slow, patient hands. Um, if you send me a video of it, I will take a look at it and I might be able to tell you then what is going on. I'll also make a comment in the, um, in the note that you put here and hopefully you'll see that and maybe you can send a video and then we can look at it. All right. Um, yeah, that's that story. All right. This is our third question and maybe our final question for today. Um, and the question goes, Martin, how do you, how do I stop Brutus from nipping at my grandkids? or grandchildren, she actually says. Do you re recommend that I just put him in the crate? Now, this question is from Priscilla um, McIntyre. I actually know Brutus. Brutus is a very young, at this time he probably, it looks like this was about a month ago. So he's probably around three months old or maybe four months old um, Rottweiler puppy. And um, he's doing what puppies do, um, which is play biting. I know Brutus, I know he's not an aggressive dog. He's not nipping at the same way that, um, you know, a fearful dog might nip at somebody's ankles. He's probably just doing play bite and stuff. And yes, I would put him in the crate. I would also make sure that the children, the grandchildren are not riling him up. We'd have conversations about energy and about how their energy affects the dog, about how their energy affects us, you know, as well. You know, like if my grandchild is really excited, chances are I'm going to feed off of some of that excitement, you know, and how the same thing that dogs will do. Um, so we'll have those kind of conversations about how even with a young child, how what you do affects others, you know? So um, that's where I would start with that. I would have the puppy on the leash when I am with my grandchildren. I would not leave the puppy alone with my grandchildren. Um, I'd have the puppy on the leash so that way I could interrupt behaviors that I don't want. Um, and I would use separation. I would use crates and play pens if I'm not able to closely supervise the children and the puppy. Same thing with the older dog as, as, as Brutus grows up, although he's gonna be a well-mannered, nice dog, I still, my personal rule for my dogs is no one under nine years old is allowed to be alone with my dogs. And there's quite a few people above nine who I would never leave alone with my dogs, right? So, so that's my rules for my personal dogs. Um, yeah, so I hope that's helpful. I believe that's the last question. All right, so the next question we have is one that is from Dr. Missy. Thank you, Dr. Missy, for checking out our stuff and uh, being with us on social media. Um, the question is, why does my dog kick grass after pooping or peeing? Is it good or not? All right, so why does the dog do it? Well, from what I've heard and I've studied is that it leaves um, tracks for the dog. For, so for example, it spreads the scent around. If the dog just went, kicking will spread around the scent so that way other dogs know, you know that the dog has been there. It also leaves a visual signal for other dogs so they could tell you know, that a dog has been there. It's a way that dogs mark out their territory, where their boundaries are. You know, because when you stop seeing the kicking and you stop smelling the smell, then you know that the dog is no longer there and it's a, it's a safe space to hunt. Um, 
Is it good or is it not good? Uh, it is neither good or not good. Um, it is just a thing that dogs do. But at the same time, if you have a dog with any kind of behavioral problems, uh, it might be something that you want to stop your dog from doing. Right. So if your dog is reactive to other dogs, aggressive towards other dogs or people, um, you know, if the dog is taking advantage of you or bullying you or any of your family members, then that's something that I would stop just simply by not allowing the dog to do it. I'd make sure if the dog goes to the bathroom and let's say they're on leash, I would just make them keep moving or tell them to sit right after. If they're off leash and they're in a backyard or something and they go, then I would just, you know, when I see them going, I just step up. No, 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 stop that, you know, and get them to stop doing it. Um, so, yeah, if the dog has, if you have problems with your dog, behavioral problems that are around dominance or aggression, then I wouldn't allow the dog to continue to do it. If otherwise, I don't really have a problem with it. All right, so I hope that answers the question. All right, so the next question is a very simple one. It says thoughts. So uh, I think Frank is gonna put the video maybe here on the screen, somewhere on the screen as I'm talking about it. Or might he may show it before. I don't know what Frank is gonna do. Nobody knows what Frank is gonna do, but he's gonna do something cool. <clears throat> You ready to go home? Come on. Mm hmm I see ya. That's a nice picture right there. Look at that. Okay. Very nice. Shake it off. So the video shows a dog. It looks like a basset hound mix, possibly. Um, and in the video, the dog is wearing a harness, which is loosely fit. Um, the dog is on the ground. It looks like the person is using a long line or maybe a... Um, uh, what is that? Retractable leash with the harness. Dog is on the ground and it looks like it's refusing to walk. Um, the question is thoughts. Now, the dog is on the street. It looks like it's a pretty fairly, not a busy street. Um, it looks like there's no sidewalk on the side. Um, and so the dog is pretty much laying in the street and refusing to walk. To me, that is not what I want. I want my dog to walk with me once I'm on the leash. I start moving, they should come with me. Um, yeah, it could be kind of cute, but it's not really cute if it's not what the owner wants to see. It could be very frustrating. I've seen people dragging dogs like that, um, where they literally are just dragging them on the pavement um, because they have no other way that they could you know, deal with it. That is a dog that I would look for some kind of training with, but there's other concerns with this particular dog. Um, I'm not sure if the dog is really physically fit. It looks like it could be a little bit overweight. Um, also, when the dog stands up, it's hard to see because he only takes a few steps, but it looks like his back end, it looks like he has a hard time getting up on his back end, and, um, and it looks like his leg looks a little stiff there as he's trying to walk. I'm not sure what part of the walk this is, if the dog's been walking a long time or just started walking, but all of these things are things that I will put into an analysis when I come across a client who has a dog that has a hard time walking with them on leash. Got to make sure the dog is healthy. Got to make sure the walk is not too long for the dog or the dog's fitness level. Um, and we have to make sure we're using the right tools and the tools are properly fit for the dog and to, in order to teach the dog that we want him to walk with us. Um, a lot of people will think that this kind of thing is cute, but I personally do not find that cute. Um, a little, that's a little sad for me. Hope that's helpful. Enjoy your dog. If you like what you see here, you know what? We love questions. So keep asking questions. Write more questions so that way I could answer them. Um, and you could definitely do it by checking out any of our social media, which you'll find in the description below. You could also go to hashtag AskArgos on Twitter, and that's a great place to ask questions too. We're gonna dive into much, many more of those questions there. And um, yeah, until next time, enjoy your day and enjoy your dog. Oh, subscribe. Subscribe to our channel.